Welcome to episode six, nesting a key plan in your title block. The first thing I'm gonna do is switch out the Autodesk default title block with one that I created myself. So first off, I have a project here with three sectors. Um, they're already defined through whatever design process we have. I have match lines set up. I have a parent view as well as three dependent views, which will also go on sheets a little later. I'm conforming with the national CAD standards, so I'll put my key plan in the bottom right corner of the title block. This is part of the drawing space that would also contain the legend and any other keynotes. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch out the perimeter of the building. So I'm going to stay in this sheet view and I'm just going to draw some detailed lines on top of it. I'll do a little bit of cleanup by nudging the lines here and there. In the end, this won't really matter as I'm gonna shrink this down to about four inches wide. Don't forget to include the line work for the match line. This way, when you copy and paste it into the new generic annotation family, you'll know where the line work is supposed to break for each sector. This legend area is gonna be about five inches from the right-hand side. So I'll make the key plan about five inches by five inches. I'll create a new generic annotation family and I'll create a five inch by five inch square with invisible lines. I'll clean up the reference planes and the line work, and I'll paste the line work from the project sheet. Select all of the line work, and I'll scale it down to about four inches wide. I'll center this new group of lines somewhere in the center for left to right and a little bit justified to the bottom for um, a key plan note on the top. I'm going to select all of these lines and make them not references as well as turn them off in visibility by default. So I'll uncheck the visible uh, checkbox there. I'll create a new text type. I'll name this one one quarter inch. I'll edit the parameters as desired. I'll change the leader and border set to 1 64th and I'll change the background to transparent. I'll center justify the text and I'll put it somewhere close to the center and then nudge it around just to get it directly in the center of the key plan. I'll create a north arrow and place it where it's desired somewhere in the top right. Mine is going to be very basic. You may have an office standard to use. I'll 
I'll end up creating a new object style for the north arrow so that the individual line of showing north pops out a little bit more. Now we're going to create some 3 8 inch text to identify each of the sectors. So I'll duplicate this, I'll change the type to 3 8 and I'll create an A, a B, and a C for identification. I'll center this text so that it looks good on the sheet and it's not overwhelmed by the uh, fill region that's going to come with it. Next I'll create the filled region. So I'm going to use a solid black but a gray works even better. I'll make it invisible by default. I'll select the line work and finish the sketch, and I'll repeat for sectors B and C. I'll make the sectors parametric, and I'll name them Sector A Fill, Sector B Fill, and Sector C Fill. I'll group them under Visibility, and I'll make it a Type Parameter. I'm also going to do the same thing for the text, and I'll use the format Sector A Text. I'll make this family shared and I'll load it back into the title block. Back in the title block, I'm going to make two reference planes at the center of where the key plane is going to be and I'll pin them. In my case, I want the key plane to be five inches by five inches, so I'll make this two and a half inches from the right and two and a half inches from the bottom. I'll clean them up and I'll pin it. Now I'm going to load the key plan family into the title block. I'll rename family one with key plan. And I'll quickly create the following types in the key plan family. I'll create an empty, a sector A, a sector B, and a sector C type. You can see that I forgot to make the key plan text invisible, so I'll correct that. So here I'm going to select all of the line work and text that is part of a general key plan but is not part of a specific sector, and I'll name it General. I'll load it back into the title block and override the parameter and its values. Now we can change the parameter values in the types. The empty should have everything off by default. Sector A should have general, sector A fill, 
and sectors B and C text visible. I'll select the family instance I've placed and replace it with sector A type. Sector B should have general. We want sector B fill, A text, and C text. Sector C should have general. We also want sector C fill, A text, and B text. And this is what they look like side by side. Select the family and go to the options bar. Use the label pull down and choose add a parameter. I name this key plan sector. I'll group it under visibility and I'll make it instance based. I'll lock an instance of the family to the reference lines and delete the others. I'm going to rename the family to have a sh for shared suffix. Make sure you edit the type parameters first and make the default family type the empty version. Load it back in and override parameter values. Do you enjoy breathing? Well, so do I. Today's video is sponsored by AIR. Fresh Air has given us life for 100,000 years. Subscribe now and you'll be entered in for an additional three oxygen molecules with each breath. Next up, I'm just going to create some new sheets, one for each sector, and I'll place those sector plans that I created earlier on their respective sheets. I'll rename and renumber the sheets as needed. Now I'm going to apply the correct key plan type to each sheet. And that's it, I'm done. So there are some benefits to this method as opposed to creating a floor plan with some elevations or creating a legend. For instance, a team member can edit the shape of the building without editing the title block. This means that it's very accessible to everybody. Secondly, we can share this with the entire team very easily. Every discipline can have it, and they can have it from the first day. And finally, the key plan is in the same place for all sheets and all disciplines. And I think that's a level of professionalism and aesthetics that we all strive for. As with all things Revit, there are a bunch of different ways to do this, and every office is going to have their own standard. This is by far my favorite. Thank you for watching, and if you think I've earned it, please like and subscribe. Thanks.